Welcome to this lesson by the Autopilots, covering RNP operations on the A320. This lesson is split into a theory and practical demonstration using Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you want to go straight to the practical flying part, skip to this timestamp. We hope you enjoy this video and don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. To this lesson on RNP. This lesson will look at the theory of performance-based navigation, PBN, and also have a deeper look into RNPAR approaches, including standard operating procedures and failure management. Let's dive in. Performance-based navigation, or PBN, is the requirements for aircraft using air traffic service, ATS, routes, and when operating in a terminal area and also on the approach. PBN can be split into two further specifications, RNAV specification and RNP specification. Essentially, RNP is similar to RNAV, except it has a monitoring and alerting function. This allows it to have other characteristics, as we will see later on. For PBN to be implemented, it needs to consist of three things. NAV spec, the aircraft and crew requirements. NAV infrastructure, the ground, space-based NAV aids. Combined, these two form NAV application, the combination of the spec and infrastructure. RNP has three requirements in order to function. Number one, accuracy. The aircraft must remain within the accuracy limit 95% all of the time. Number two, integrity. It should never exceed the containment limit set at two times RNP. And number three, continuity. It must be reliable and there should never be an RNP capability loss. A combination of these three things, plus a monitoring and alerting system, gives you RNP. There are two types of RNP approaches. RNP approach, sometimes called an RNAV approach, and an RNPAR approval required. RNP approaches are fairly common, and now we are seeing more RNPAR approaches, especially in high-terrain airports. Because of the alerting and monitoring capabilities, RNP navigation can have curves. These curves are being seen on more RNPAR approval required approaches, which allows terrain clearance, noise abatement and overall a more efficient way of flying. Minima for RNPAR approaches can be as low as 250 feet. Instead of CAT 1 or CAT 3B on charts, it states the RNP value required. For example, look at this Jeppesen chart for Funchal Airport in Madeira. If we use an RNP of 0.1 to be used the whole way down to the missed approach point, we can a lower minima than if we use an RNP of 0.2. This makes sense, as we are requiring a higher degree of accuracy, so we can use lower minima. Take your time to study this chart, which displays the RNP limits. The limits can be divided into three categories. The normal zone, the operational limits, and the obstacle clearance limits. Our approaches should stay in the normal zone. If we pass these limits, then we must make the appropriate callout. We will look at these callouts later. The operational limits are the limits for which, if exceeded, the approach should be discontinued. These limits are 1 RNP laterally and 75 feet vertically. Finally, the RNPAR approach will protect us as long as we stay within the obstacle clearance limits. These are defined as two times RNP laterally and the vertical error budget. If we exceed these limits, there is a serious risk of controlled flight into terrain. Error budgets are when RNPAR approaches still provide a certain level of obstacle clearance even if there is an error. Vertical error budgets, VEB, provide the limits of vertical deviation on the approach only. The operational limit for the approach is 75 feet. Path definition error, PDE, is the difference in nav accuracy between what is displayed on the ND and what is displayed on the charts. If this happens, 
Any drift will be shown on the ND and also the PFD when the approach push button is pushed. The lateral obstacle limit is 2 RNP. The lateral operational limit is 1 RNP. In short, crew must remain within 1 RNP at all times. On the lateral scale, 1 dot equals 0.1 nautical miles. Therefore, half a dot equals 0.05 nautical miles, and full scale deflection equals 0.2 nautical miles. On the vertical scale, 1 dot equals 100 feet, therefore half a dot equals 50 feet. These are the likely FMAs that you will see on the RNP approach. Final blue, app nav in green. For when you have intercepted the lateral element of the approach, but not the vertical. You will also see a blue arrow on the ND showing when the vertical approach begins. This should be cross-checked with what's on your approach plate. Final app in green, for when you have intercepted both the lateral and vertical path of the RNPAR approach. Disconnect AP for landing appears in amber at 400 feet, or DA minus 50 feet as a reminder to disconnect by 250 feet. When it comes to the operation of an RNPAR approach, there are several operational tasks we need to complete to ensure a safe and legal approach. Let's start with flight preparation. First, we need to check the qualification. Is the plane certified for RNPAR? This can be found in the QRH. Then we should see if there are any MELs that might inhibit us from carrying out this approach. Finally, conduct a GPS rain check. Take your time to familiarize yourself with the descent preparation flows, which cover setting up for the approach. Then the initial approach flows are to be completed by the crew to ensure the correct RNP and QRH are used. And finally, the approach push button can be pushed when you are cleared for the approach. The two waypoint is the final descent point and has a blue arrow over it. The RNP value on the progress page should be monitored. Ensure the correct go around altitude is set and the autopilot can be used down to 250 feet. The monitoring of flight parameters is absolutely essential from both pilots. Here is what we should be looking out for on the approach. L dev and V dev on PFD. Cross track on ND. Call out excessive deviation if lateral deviation greater than a half dot. PM calls out lat dev. And if vertical deviation reaches greater than one half dot, PM calls out VDEV. You may have seen this in the PROG page, but what does it mean? The Airbus computes an estimated position error, EPE, which should not be greater than the RNP value. If EPE is less than RNP, then you have nav accuracy high. GPS primary looks at the GPIRS of the aircraft. When the GPIRS shows both accuracy and integrity, GPS primary is displayed. The RNPAR approach should be cancelled if final app does not engage, or if you have a dual GPS primary lost on both NDs, FMS1 and 2 failure, nav accuracy downgrade alert, FM GPS position disagree, FMGC failure. Loss of final app mode on approach. Autopilot failure if the RNP less than 0.3. Loss of GPWS terrain function. Applicable if high terrain or obstacles on approach. Any altitude discrepancies. Lateral deviation greater than 1 RNP. Vertical deviation greater than 3 quarters of a dot, 75 feet. Following a go around due to downgrade in equipment. You must tell ATC, unable RNP due equipment. That being said, you don't need to go around every time. If you have a loss of one, GPS, FMGC, autopilot, MCDU, or display unit, then just switch to the other autopilot. Okay. 
Let's have a quick recap of what we have learnt in today's lesson. RNP is different to RNAV as it has a monitor and alerting system on board. RNP must have three things. Accuracy, integrity, and continuity. RNPAR approaches can be curved. This allows better terrain clearance, less noise and more efficient flying. The terrain must be displayed on both NDs during the approach, unless there is weather around. In this case one ND may use weather. The autopilot can be used down to 250 feet. You must go around when you have three quarters of a dot, 75 feet, or when one RNP will be reached. This concludes the theory. Now let's jump into the simulator, where we will carry out various RNPAR approaches. This will turn you into an RNP master. Here we are doing an RNPAR approach onto runway 33 in Salzburg. We can see that the captain is PF and AP1 is engaged. Speed managed. Checked. Radio altimeter alive. Checked. Gear down. Gear down. Flaps three. Speed checked. Flaps three. Flaps full. Speed checked. Flaps full. One thousand. One thousand feet. Check. Five hundred. Five hundred feet. Stable. Checked. Hundred above. Autopilot coming off. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Twenty. Retard. 
spoilers, reverse green, D cell. Now let's have a look at an abnormal situation with a downgrade in GPS. With one loss of GPS primary, we can just switch the autopilot if needed. However, if we lose GPS primary on both sides, then we cannot continue the approach. Master caution, I have control. Read e cam. GPS 1 fault. OK, autopilot 2 engaged. Checked. No e cam actions required. Clear nav? Clear. Status page, just shows GPS 1 fault. Remove status. Status removed. E cam actions complete. I have GPS primary lost on both sides. That's confirmed. We're not visual either. Go around. Flaps. Heading selected. Man Toga. SRS. Heading. Checked. Positive climb. Gear up. Gear up. Thrust climb, open climb. Checked. Flaps 1. Speed checked, flaps 1. This concludes the RMP lesson. We hope it has been useful for you. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. We are in our early days as a channel so we'd love to hear your feedback. Stay tuned for the next lessons. Until then, happy landings.